and my talks on moving from CVS to Git, which we called, hello, um, moving CVS to Git without the big bang. Da, 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 da. So you won't have seen me before, because this is my first Yapsi, and this is my first ever talk at a Pearl event. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Way. Friendly, friendly faces and all. Um, yeah, I like working in Pearl, and I um, started my software engineering career uh, working in Git. So Git has been, Git and its principles are the, is just how I think of version control. Um, I started at Pyram last September, um, and my first project was to make a start replacing CVS with Git, um, which is part of a much wider um, set of projects we've got going just to make our lives a little better. So a very quick mandatory side about the company I work for. Um, we, we service the world's biggest financial institutions um, in an area called securities finance, which I'm going to skip over with. But basically, we provide three things. We help, um, help these companies reconcile their books. Uh, we automate what's known as their trade life cycle, so their collateral management, their exposure management. And we are a connectivity hub. So when I started, um, development at Pyram was based on a model um, built around about four developers. So developer works on an issue, tests in the shared environment, commits to CVS. That triggers a code review um, using a tool called Fabricator. Um, once that code review is completed, we tag the files to release and then run a command to deploy that tag to production. Um, it worked for four people. It does not work for the 23 developers we've got now. Uh, our revision history is effectively just a massive set of commits, marks, debug, experiment, rollback. Um, the reviews on the single file post commit um, causes make causes quite a lot of headaches. We can't tell whether or not the change itself is um, correct and sensible. We're basically just reviewing a couple of lines of diff. Um, all developers sharing the common environment makes it very hard to actually understand the effect of your change um, compared with everyone else. And it means that we can't do testing um, before we deploy. Um, to be fair, we already know it's a bit of a turn off for potential hires um, describing this. So the idea is that Git gives us the mutual his mutable history so that we can organize our changes and describe them um, as complete commits. Uh, we can use the branch model so that we can actually experiment. Um, you're all familiar with, I'm sure, uh, the advantages of that. We, use, we can do pre-merge code reviews of the entire change. And we can um, make use of the automated build tools and build processes, and maybe even a deployment pipeline based off of Git. So we can't, we couldn't do it in just a big bang approach because we have no isolated test environments to actually compare these two, um, the two systems, and we have ten years worth of tooling built around CVS. I mentioned it's our automated deployment mechanism. It's our con infrastructure management system. It, it underpins our configuration management system. And it underpins all of our mandatory audit reporting that we need to do. Particularly the last one means that um, throughout this entire thing, we've had to make a real effort to protect CVS and keep CVS the source of truth for this. So the idea is that we have. Um, two concurrent version control systems mirroring each other, um, where development is done on either CVS or Git. Um, deployment still happens through CVS, but we can begin using the new Git-based tools so that eventually we get to retire CVS and we just have the Git mirror. So, you know, a nice, simple concept. Um, Start with the two starting with the two-way mirroring, we basically split it down into four parts. We wanted to build new Git repositories from the CVS modules, but we wanted to have the CVS modules grouped so that we could, um, into a smaller number of 
Git repositories representing bits of the system. Um, then we mirror commits to CVS to the Git repository, apply commits merge to master into CVS, and just make sure the pair don't go out of sync. So with the initial import, um, we spent quite a lot of time working out exactly how this would, um, the structure of our code base, how we wanted it to be. Then we took, we, free, we took the list of modules, we ran git cvs import, which was a Matthias Ulrichs tool um, for each cvs module, but targeting it to the same git repository. So what this then got us was a Git repository that did contain all of the commits to CVS. It, they were basically ordered by the module by the modules imported. So in this example, you can see we've got two commits for the first module, two commits to the second module. So although they're there, it's not yet a very useful history. So the idea is that we clean the um, the initial import. To do that, we worked out how to do automatic interactive rebasing. So the idea here is that we can use the editor and git sequence editor environment variables before executing a git rebase minus i. And we need to do this because at this point our largest git repository is 200,000 commits. So editor is a Perl script. Um, it's actually a pretty simple thing. All it does is it's invoked at the point that git rebase tells you to edit a squash commit, and it will clean up some white space, and remove some duplicate, duplicate lines, and save the commit file, um, which is reasonable. A git sequence editor is also a Perl script, but this one is designed to play with the rebase script. So the first thing it does is executes a git log to get all of the um, all of the commit history into a data structure, and it organizes it by date. Um, once it's designed, to, once it organizes it by date, the aim is to squash commits that are similar automatically. That bit of code there, which I realize is quite small on this, is kind of the crux of the algorithm. It's a look behind algorithm. So for each commit. It will look back at previous commits until it can find until the commit it's looking back is older than a time window or is clearly different. Different being has a different author, has a completely different commit message, or touches a completely different set of files. So I ran the this initial import over my 207 separate CVS modules with the 200,000 commits. Um, 36 hours later, I have 10% fewer commits, but they have been squashed, making it ever so slightly a nicer Git history. Uh, so now that we've got our, um, our Git repository with our clean history representing, um, representing our code base, we want to obviously keep the commits. Um, we want to now have commits applied to it. So. The first part is the applying the is um, is the Git workflow. New tool, apply Git branch, another Perl script. Um, this is run on the CVS server. At the point you have a branch that's ready to merge, you execute apply Git branch with the branch name. Apply Git branch takes your branch, rebases it over the latest master, merges it to master, pushes the merged branch pushes a merge master back to the remote Bitbucket repository, um, and then applies each uh, commit on CVS. So we, went, we did it that way um, to protect the CVS repository primarily, um, in that any failure of rebase, any failure of merge, or any failure to push to remote would mean that CVS is the commits are never push, put into CVS. So the worst case scenario is the Git repository gets, um, gets damaged and we have to rebuild the Git repository, which we know takes 36 hours and it's a pain, but um, at least is not, um, not business impacting. So mirroring CVS to Git is actually a lot easier. It's just a CVS post commit hook. So this is another Perl script executed after um, any CVS commit. It identifies the correct um, Git repository for the CVS modules. 
um, it takes a temporary working clone of a local remote on the CVS server, applies the git commit to that temporary working clone on the local remote, pushes that um, temporary working clone back to the local remote, then attempts to push the local remote to the remote remote, the Bitbucket server. And the reason why we have all of that is to protect ourselves against the Bitbucket server disappearing for a while, in that we have the local remote always either at the same level as Bitbucket on master or slightly ahead. So when Bitbucket comes back, we can just execute a git push and keep everything in sync. Now you've got two separate version control systems with people merging to each, so we have to solve all the concurrency issues. Um, with the apply git branch tool, that was quite easy. I just wrapped it in a lock that would be shared between um, git and CVS. Um, with CVS, I basically had to do a man-in-the-middle attack with the CVS server, um, replacing it with an interceptor. So, the CVS interceptor, another Perl script. Uh, this time, it's invoked by the CVS client instead of the real CVS binary. This is on the CVS physical machine. Um, that Perl script will open its own CVS server, which it will talk to, and then pass messages between the, um, the client and the server. Um, fortunately, this was possible because we just so happened to not use the Kerberos encryption that came with the CVS server, which was actually a rare stroke of luck. Um, that then meant that as soon as a commit um, command is seen by the interceptor, it can wrap that commit command in the lock shared with the apply git branch to keep them in sync and solve the concurrency issues protecting us that way. So, the, inter the interceptor was easily the hardest, most painful thing I've ever had to do in software engineering. There, is some, there was some incomplete documentation, um, which I grabbed from that link, um, which I then implemented as best I can, attempted to watch it um, be used in the real world, roll it back when it failed. I think that, that was about four attempted releases of that, so not too many. Um, also turns out that CVS, uh, my CVS interceptor, needs to write and read from studout and studer to talk to the CVS binary. The various Perl modules we had that just so happened to write to studout studer for you would arbitrarily break this entire communications process. Um, and it was somewhat unfortunate that to deploy this interceptor to the CVS server, I used our deployment mechanism built on CVS. So when I broke it, I took down all development, all deployments, including the development and deployment process, which I had to use to fix the interceptor. So that was a fun day. But after all that, we now have developers working in Git at Pyram. I am one of them. There are others. Um, we also have developers working in CVS, um, which is fine as they, as they train, as they learn. They'll move over to Git. We still need CVS, uh, we'll still need CVS for a while as we um, start to manage our deployment process um, because we now want to start thinking about building our continuous integration pipelines um, and all of the tooling around that. Um, but we do have pre-merge code review now, so we're actually getting much, much, much better code. Um, so basically, I learned a lot and we're in a much better place because of it. And should you wish to see any of this crazy, we have um, we are potentially going to open source all of this tool. Um, do feel free to have a look or to request, um, make a request uh, to have it open sourced. We would absolutely love that. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for um, taking the time to listen to my talk. I hope it was mildly entertaining um, and somewhat informative. So, thank you. I open the floor to any questions hesitantly. Yes, sir. Um, 
Not, not really. And quite a few of these modules also used in almost that entire process to then write to stood out and stood out for you, for your convenience. Um, but no, that was fun. Any, anyone else? Uh, I will come to you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you next. Yeah. Regrettably, I. Oh, do I have um, any other code right now? I don't have any on my laptop, but I'm um, I'm sure I may be able to share. And as I said, we're going to open source it, so you will have plenty of time to um, peruse this. Yes and no. Uh, sorry, do do we handle um, CVS doing per file commits and Perl doing multi file commits? Um, so when we execute apply git branch, which has the multi file commits, um, apply git branch will take that commit apart and then execute a set of CVS commits representing representing the changes. The other way round. It does just merge. It, it does um, do still do per file per per file commits over to um, to Git, but it's a little bit um, it's a little bit dirty. But we have an automatic interactive rebase script tool that we can always go back and clean it up when we so wish. Okay, any more? No. Splendid. Well, thank you. Oh. Oh, <laughs> fantastic, clap away. <laughs>